Hi listener, this is From Ideology to Unity, a spiritual journey where we let go of ego and ideological doctrine in favour of meaning, purpose and unity as a whole. So what is this episode about? Something I've been pondering a few days actually is it's about how we process our negative, so to speak, uh, emotions. So, well, like rage or fear or hatred. I'm sure you know what I mean, right? So I'm not the only person who said this by any means. This isn't my original realization necessarily, but it didn't really click when I heard it originally. I only just clicked for me the other day, actually. And what that is, is that we need to really allow for and make room for and honor our negative emotions. Now that might sound like a no brainer, right? You don't want to repress it. You've got to accept how you feel and love how you feel, right? If you can't love yourself, you can't love others, right? So the, I knew that intellectually, but the thing is we can be reminded of our negative emotions and we can get catalysts even from relatively seemingly small things like we're watching the program, right? You get invested in the characters, right? I don't know, maybe that's just me, <laughs> I don't know. But you're, or maybe you might just watch something like the other side of the street and there's this, um, maybe an argument and you feel like someone's being unreasonable and maybe you feel uh, that brings up uh, anger or judgment or maybe even fear. Uh, and there's this reaction that it's easy to have where we try to change our emotion into love or forgiveness or something, right? Now, we might even tell ourselves that we accept it and love it and we'll focus on that love and acceptance that we feel for it. But then, at least what I did do, have been doing is, or focusing on accepting it and loving it, I was actually trying to change it into acceptance and love so I wouldn't feel it, right? I was trying to change my emotions because I was judging them. I wasn't accepting the way I felt really. I was this talk in my mental chatter. I was talking about accepting and talking about loving. I was saying to myself, my ego was saying to myself, so I guess, yeah, we've got to accept it and love it. Now let's change it. I was like, yeah, 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 I accept it and I love it. Now, can I stop feeling this because it's wrong and I need to be good and righteous? <laughs> like, yeah. So it might even be spiritual ego. It's like, I am peaceful. I am above these things. And so I must stop feeling this as soon as possible. Love, 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 peace, love, love. Yes, yes, love, love. And what that feeling is, what's really happening there potentially, is that you're not actually letting yourself feel it and accepting it in action. Because accepting is leaving space for something to be there and just be there. You might even do this breathing exercise. <sighs> Calm down, get rid of that horrible emotion and I'll stop feeling that because that's just wrong and bad. And I shouldn't want to feel angry at people or afraid of people or be judging people. So just take a deep breath and get rid of it. So you don't need to think about those negative emotions and you can be righteous. And it's this kind of idea that you're kind of 
you're not good enough as you are, but you're better when you're peaceful, right? So that's coming from a place of not being good enough, but also that you're better than others because you're peaceful and accepting and loving. And you're doing that when you have negative reactions coming up to things you see in the external. That's a, it's like sneaky spiritual bypassing. There's regular old spiritual bypassing where you're just like, oh, love and peace. And yes, we are all love and peace. And you just focus on that. No, th those are unwholesome emotions. The sneakier form is when you're like, yes, I love and I accept it. I love and accept it. In and out. To, well, actually trying to squeeze it out with in your mental chatter loving and peace and the, the rhetoric of love and peace and acceptance but how do you love do you love with words suppose there's a parent right and they always make sure whenever there's any negative whenever their child shows any negative reactions to things, so to speak, any anger or fear, whenever they feel anger and fear in reaction to what their child does, or, you know, either both ways, right? Suppose they always say, you know, always dismiss it whenever there's any crying, no, don't feel any fear, it's all good, it's all good. And they're always not respecting and honoring the negative emotion that comes up in their child and themselves and in that relationship. Now, what happens is that would actually kind of be abuse, right? So do you really want to do that with you and your own emotions? Because I don't think that I'm the only person doing this. And it's easy to do because I, I saw people like Laurie Ladd talking about, you know, give space for your emotions, honour your negative emotions and give, you know, accept and love it. And um, I read... The Law of One. Actually, what I mostly read is The Law of One 101. I haven't actually read as much of the whole channel text as I'd like. But there's this stuff about know yourself, accept yourself, love yourself. Yeah, I knew this, I knew this. And it was intellectual stuff. It, we need to be patient with ourselves, though, when we learn these things on an intellectual level. Oh, we've got an ego. We've often, when we get to spirituality, a lot of us, probably most of us, have a spiritual ego. And we, 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 have, we should acknowledge that. You know, that's not something to deny or beat ourselves up for. Um, but it means we've got to pay attention to how we engage with our own emotions and our negative emotions. We always have an opportunity to truly honor and leave, give space for and accept our negative emotions when they arise. But that's not just words. It's not just something to say to yourself when it comes up. It's not just, you've got to actually in, in how you act towards yourself. You've got to actually just sit there and feel it, right? So it's okay if you're watching a show or something happening in real life and you feel angry or judgment. In, in fact, it's okay to you're watching a show, right? And this is villains being a huge jerk, right? And you're not going to like, you might want to, you're just feeling like, wow, piece of shit, right? Oh my God, <laughs> just a little bit. And you're like, no, I shouldn't get too carried away with that. And no, 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 it's fine. Actually, it's actually fine. Even if you rent a little bit about a character in the show you're watching, it's like, it's actually fine. 
as long as you observe yourself when you do it, right? What you don't want to do is try to at all times be completely placid and be love and acceptance, love and acceptance, love and acceptance. Now go away because I don't really accept you. I'm just saying love and acceptance till you go away, which isn't love and acceptance, is it? Love and acceptance isn't what you say to yourself. It's what you do, or rather don't do. The restraint from control, exertion of control over your emotions. Because if you're trying to control them, you're not really accepting and loving it. Even if you're using the idea of love and acceptance to control, that's kind of worse, right? And that's not, I don't mean that as a judgment. Actually, it does count like, sound like a judgment, doesn't it? But it's almost the idea of using the idea of love and acceptance as a way of controlling people is, sounds kind of more insidious. And if you're controlling your emotions and yourself, if you're doing that within, that's going to reflect itself in the outside, right? because as within, so without, and vice versa. So I, I guess we've got to pay attention to ourselves and recognize actions speak louder than words, but that applies to your inner work and your relationship with yourself, right? It's just a lesson I've been learning, I suppose. I mean, we see people like Eckhart Tolle and maybe Sadhguru or something. Or, you know, we see certain people and they're present and we see that and we, on some level, we envy that or we just feel like, I wish I could be there. But we can be patient with ourselves and we don't have to judge what comes up within that isn't that. It's okay. We are, you know, we've got these bodies, right? And we've got a world with there's been so much ego for a long time. And we've gone astray with Mr. Mark many a time. And that's okay. It led us to where you are, right? And it's okay when it happens in the moment. You come out of presence, you can always center yourself again, come back. And you can. You can miss the mark again. It's okay. That doesn't mean, but that doesn't mean just because you're accept, truly accepting yourself, you're just gonna go around do bad things to people, like go around hurting people. Like, well, I, I accept what I'm doing. I truly am leaving space for it. So let's go with it. No, no. no. It doesn't mean let it take over. That would be the opposite extreme. Remember, we're not dealing with duality here. We're dealing with unity. It's finding that balance. And it has to be felt out. It can't just be intellectualized. We've got to consistently observe ourselves, deal with this negative emotion, and fine tune how we respond. Do we overreact and go, and then later, like the next day or something, be like, oh man, I really overreacted there. Or even if it's immediate after, do we notice? Or do we have a reaction and immediately try to shut it down? It could be anything in between. And we get experience. And the catalyst has how we do it. And if we're patient with ourselves, we'll find it, it gets easier. Not overnight, it takes time like a muscle, more than a muscle. It's like, yeah, it's like you're learning to ride a bike. It requires balance and it requires strength. And it requires patience. And you need to have the respect for yourself and the acceptance and the love for yourself to the extent that 
you you understand that you'll ride it eventually and not beat yourself up or struggling and you know maybe children actually understand that more than we do sometimes because they're less conditioned into well the conditions that else adults have to more of a degree we'll beat ourselves up for it or we you know what we've been talking about here so so yeah hopefully this helps someone um and if you like feel free to like and subscribe and so forth so yeah uh, have a nice day or evening and uh bye for now